with a dreamy far off look and her nose stuck in a book. Hi internet friends, welcome to my channel. So for today's video I wanted to update you on my 23 books in 2023. Did I accomplish that goal or did I fail miserably? Spoiler alert, I did not fail miserably. I actually did pretty well and I am pretty proud of myself. I ended up reading 19 out of 23 books. Yay! Huh? <laughs> Don't look at me! Hey, you're recording! <laughs> Why did you mouth it? Why'd you mouth something then? I said, don't look at me. <laughs> I tried to mouth it, but then you were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife. Okay, for, so for number one was Secret Vampire by L.J. Smith. This was actually the first book I tried to read I think in January of 2023 and unfortunately they had the C word trigger in there and I could not read it due to like chemotherapy and stuff. So that one <laughs> did not get read and I'm sad because I have a beautiful edition of it with red print and it's cloth bound and I wanted all of them but now I don't know if they're all gonna have like sad. Anyway, so I did not read number one. Number two, The Air by Kira Cass. Yes, I did read The Air by Kira Cass. I gave it five out of five stars. This is following the next, it's like the spinoff kind of, or the continuation of a series for the selection. And when you read the selection and you find out who gets together, then it's their daughter in the selection. And then for number three, The Crown by Kira Cass. I also read that and I gave that a 4 out of 5 stars. Do that book I finished the series which was pretty awesome. For number 4 I read Operation Prom Date by Cindy Madison. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. It was a short adorable romance like fake dating kind of trope and there were actually like some pretty deep parts in it that made me think of like this seems more than just like a random little romance so I really I really enjoyed that. It's set in high school. Number five I read The Boyfriend Bet by Chris Cannon and that one I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Another just fun short YA romance and it was just a very fun book to read. I think that one's also set in high school. Number six, I read Sophie and Carter. I gave that one a five out of five stars. It was also in the category of short YA romances. Like pretty short, I think like under 200 pages. And I just was very surprised that these two high schoolers who were like crushing on each other and then having a cute little relationship but then like he had really intense stuff going on in his life and she had really intense stuff going on in her life and it was just like above and beyond of my expectations for a simple romance. Then for number seven I jumped into Shadowland The Immortals book three by Alison Noel. I just I love this series so much. And I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars, but it was just, I don't know, I just, I really love Alison Noel's writing, and it, like, can't say too much about it, because it is book 3, and there's, like, so much that goes on in book 1 that sets up book 2 and book 3, so it's just, like, pretty much there's just this supernatural person, and there's, like, crazy influences, and I don't, it's just... It's hard to explain, but it's just a fun YA supernatural for sure. For number eight, I read Vampires Get Old. <laughs> Never mind. I read... <laughs> number eight, I read Vampires Never Get Old. That makes more sense. Tales with a Fresh Bite, The Untold Legends. And this was an anthology with like 10 different authors. And I really enjoy anthologies because then a lot of times if I liked a story then I'll go find like their full book and a lot of times then I'll, I'll find a new author to read. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was kind of hard to rate all together but um, I did write in my review like how many stars each short story got 
And my favorite one was Vampires Never Say Die by Zoraida Cordova and Natalie C. Parker. And The House of Black Sapphires by Danielle Clayton, which I have another book by Danielle Clayton and I really want to read that one now. Number nine, I read Unmasked by Helen Hart. I gave this a five out of five stars. I am on books 10, 11, and 12 of this series and I just love this paranormal romance adult series and we follow a human nurse who one day um, a vampire who's actually been asleep for hundreds and hundreds of years he breaks into the blood bank at the hospital and then they have this like connection and it's like romance and all this fun stuff very crazy very fun story number 10 I read Deadly Little Secret this is another five out of five stars I just think oh it's just gonna be a fun YA and it was just like so incredibly good I just feel like it's good to go into a mystery. It's about a 16 year old girl who has a decent ordinary life but then when a mysterious new guy shows up at her junior high, I love when that happens like in Twilight, <laughs> Camila's life becomes anything but extraordinary and it's just so it's just so good and now I want to read book two. Number 11 I read The Accidental Movie Star. I give this a 4.5 out of stars. It was funny and I liked the British guy, but I feel like some plot lines were just kind of over the place. And this is by Emily Evans and I have I think four other of her accidental books, accidental TV show, accidental this. Number 12, I read Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Charporita <laughs> and um, I gave this a four, four stars. It was really good ballet, like black swan, dark kind of twisted story. There's definitely a lot of trigger warnings so I would definitely check that for sure. Number 13 I read Dork Diaries by Renee Russell. I discovered Dork Diaries when um, I was down for a few days due to my condition and I was like I just really want to read but I don't really want an audiobook too much and I want to read physically and these books are just perfect because they're just spread out and written in journal format. And they're just really fun and the drama that she has compared to the normal drama in my life is so different because it's middle school drama and it's just so fun to just read. So now I want to read all of those books. Number 14, The Edge of Happiness by Kristen Turnage. I ended up not reading that. I couldn't find it on audio and I just didn't feel like trying to read a 400 page book without audio just in case I get vertigo and I need to. So I ended up not reading it. Number 15, How the King of Elfham Learned to Hate Stories. This is by Holly Black. I gave this a four out of five stories. It's in the Folk Air series. It's 3.5 and it just, it teaches you more about why Cardin is just kind of who he is. And yeah, it's good. My friend, Bookishly Nerdy, Kelsey on booktube got me that. Number 16, I read Court by Tracy Wolf. This is book four in the Crave series, which I've talked about a ton on my channel. Supernatural Academy and just crazy stuff happens. So good, very much written in like 2010 YA style. And if you liked like Twilight and um, House of Night and Beautiful Creatures, like that's totally like something that you would probably enjoy. Next I did not read Geekerella by Ashley Poston. Poston. Um, I don't know why I really, I really wanted to. That one just got away from me. Number 18, The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. Yeah, Michelle Hopkin. Um, I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So good. Such a interesting mystery it's woven into a supernatural world and well, normal world with supernatural in it and it was just so good. Number 19, I did not read It's All Your Fault and I think I have that on my next TBR because I really want to. Number 20, The Vampire Diaries, Stefan's Diaries, which is book one in the series of Stefan's Diaries and I did read it and I loved it 
and I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. Oh yes, I gave it five stars. It was pretty much like learning about his life before Vampire Diaries and like a lot of like extra lore and just like learning about how their vampire world works more and um, Catherine was in it, which was cool. Number 21. I did read Awake at Dawn by C.C. Hunter. This is book two in the Shadowfall series. And this is a supernatural like summer camp kind of boarding school. So good too. Probably I give that a five out of five stars. Number 22, I read Beastly Bones, which is book two in the Jacoby series by William Ritter. And this is a series that my husband got me, I think last year. And it was very good, and I think I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. And number 23, last one was Of Triton by Anna Banks. And this is a um, mer people story, where, like human girl meets merman and like, Super, super good, fun YA supernatural, which I read a lot of those. That is 19 out of 23 books that I did read. The only ones I missed were Edge of Happiness, Geekerella, It's All Your Fault, and The Secret Vampire. So those are the only ones I missed. So I am like extremely proud of being able to accomplish this because last year I was not close at all. And I'm gonna be clo hopefully close this year. I keep like making sure that I'm like, oh, I should read that book because you know, it's on the list. If you made it to the end of the video, leave your... <laughs> this is going well, this is going great. If you made it to the end of the video, then leave three books that you wanna read in 2024 and I would love to check them out and maybe add them to my gro ever growing TBR. <laughs> That's a wrap. Uh, everybody back up. <laughs> Alright, um... Good job, babe. Oh, be proud. What the heck is my outro? Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe All right. now, or I will squash you. Alright, that's all for my 23 in 2023 books. And thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, that would be super awesome. And if you'd like to like this video, that would really help out my channel. I hope you have a wonderful day. Remember, you find magic. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, where there's smoke, there's fire. Remember, you can find magic wherever you look. Sit back and relax. All you need is a book. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye.